Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today's book review is The Girl Who Drank the Moon and I got this at the library and there's just too many stickers so I'm just gonna put the picture of the book cover right here for you all to see. I picked it up because the cover, very pretty. I love the little dragon right there in the, not really in the middle, under the title and I really love illustration book covers and I think it really works well with middle grade and yes this is a middle grade book and it won the Newbery Award is that what it's called the John Newbery Award and I was very intrigued with the summary and basically there is a town called the Pre I'm gonna mess it up the Protectorate yeah, a little wordy. Every year they have to basically sacrifice a baby for the witch. And the witch, Zan, actually is a good witch. And she just picks up those babies at the end of the forest every year. And then brings them back to the new cities. Like on the other side of this huge ridge and it's dangerous to trek through but the witch can because she like zigzags through the forest and all that stuff but people in the protectorate have never been past like a certain point so they're just really secluded and they're run by a council and a sisterhood and there's a twist in there which I didn't see coming so props to Kelly for that. One year Zan picks up a baby that was sacrificed to the witch and on accident Zan gives her moonlight instead of starlight and so she comes becomes very powerful and eventually Zan has to protect everyone involved including Luna. Her name's Luna of course yeah that's cute and so she does a whole bunch of spell work and all that stuff and makes Luna's magic just kind of like a ball in her mind. And every time that she hears something magical, she blanks out and she forgets until her 13th birthday when things happen. And we also follow Anton. I'm just going to say his name is Anton. It's, it's a weird name. <laughs> And my phonics is not great. So I was saying, I'm just saying Anton. That was a weird point of view. And before I go into that, I'm just going to say I gave it 3.5 out of 5 stars. In the beginning, it was going to be a 5 star book. And then it lowered to a 4 star. And then by the middle, I was like, why are there so many points of views? And jumping around characters in like not even just chapter but like multiple scenes for middle grade but also just like if it was a young adult book or a new adult or adult I would have liked it either but especially for middle grade I think there's just too much going on in this book I had to really really pay attention as to what was going on because there are a lot of information dumps and I can understand to an extent information dumps for middle grade readers, but it was not necessary to do all of that because if you just focused on Luna and Zan, I understand why you would focus on them, then everything else is from Zan or Luna's point of view, including the other characters. And there's like eight seven other characters that get their own point of view which is just too much it's just, like it's too much and at least it's in third person if it was in first person i would have chucked the book across the the room and put it as uh one star it's third person there's like eight nine i lost track point of views so I, yeah, that, that was a little too much. And Anton, I don't, I don't think you needed to have his point of view. You start when he's a child and then you go all the way up to like early twenties 
in his point of view when he's married and he has a child. How is that middle grade? I don't get it. Like, I, I'll understand Zan because that's the grandmother, the witch, all of that. And, of course, I understand Luna because we follow her from birth all the way up to 13. Makes sense. Those two make the most sense. And that's why I'm, I'm saying, you know, two points of view if you need to do them. The other ones, unnecessary. <laughs> makes it a little too confusing. I would actually, if... I was still in the tutoring sphere, the teaching sphere, like I was a few years ago. I can only picture myself recommending this book to advanced, like advanced readers, because there's too much going on. And that's disappointing. I thought it would be better, honestly. And so it's whimsical. It's funny. It's, um, it's fun. And I understand the three concepts that Kelly was focusing on. One of them was feel all of your emotions, including sorrow and sadness. That's okay. You need to feel them. Communication is key. <laughs> and don't lie. Those are very important to talk about with kids, especially when you have um, middle grade and they're about to go into high school. Very important. I get it. But... Yeah, too many points of view, too much head hopping, too much switching back and forth between like the actual story and then there's like uh, these very short chapters that are all in italics and we don't always know who's telling the story and the story, whatever it is, is like folk tales and then it's like it's a person talking to another person, but you don't hear the other person. So it's a little confusing as well. The only one that I figured out who was talking was Luna to the baby dragon because that was obvious. There's, on there's only one dragon, right? <laughs> so, and the other ones, I have no idea who they were. And I think they were all women talking to their children. But it's not good when you don't know for sure what's happening. I've read some other books that have won the John Newberry Medal Award, whatever it is. And those, I haven't read a lot. But the ones that I have, they're way better than this book. I don't know. Like, it's a, it's a good book. Does it deserve a medal? No. I feel bad saying that, but it, I don't think it, I don't know. I don't tutor or teach anymore, so I don't know the reaction from kids or preteens. That probably had something to do with it. I'm not 100% sure on that, so I'm not, I can't comment. But if I were recommending books, which was one of my roles when I was running that tutoring center, I wouldn't have recommended this book other than to very advanced readers because I can see children that are struggling or just getting confidence in reading not like it and they would probably give up. Also, it's pretty long. It's like 400 pages for a middle grade book. Maybe the point is for adults to read it to their children, but I don't know if that is... What's the word? Like a good marketing strategy? I guess I'm going to go with that because I can't forget. Like I can't think up of another word. But yeah, I guess not the best marketing strategy because you do want middle schoolers to read on their own and to get a reading comprehension down before they hit uh, high school and then graduate high school. But yeah, I know that there are some other books, middle grade books, that are kind of meant to be read aloud, like, as a family, you know? But those are older books. Like, when it was a thing where you had uh, reading time, and reading time meant the whole family sits down for, you know, 30 minutes or something, and then someone reads out loud type of thing. So that could have been, like, a th old throwback. But, but how many people do that is the thing. Not that many. I mean, there's a, a lot of parents don't even read to their children like children's books. So 
which is not good. And we can see that with the statistics for reading and reading comprehension nowadays. I enjoyed The Girl Who Drank the Moon, but I could not give it four stars. So I, I went with three stars, but it's three and a half. And, you know, like I said, there could have been a lot of tidying up and organizing and cutting stuff out and it would have easily been a five star book for me personally. I know there's a lot of people that love it and teachers, it was interesting to see that they also felt it was too much and they would not have recommended it or like they would have to read the book out loud to their kids or their students so I was like well I guess I'm not the only one thinking this way. <laughs> that kind of made me think is this like a middle grade book for teenagers or adults that want something whimsical? Like are we trying to do Howl's Moving Castle because then that would not have worked like that's not sorry but you can't do a Howl's Moving Castle. <laughs> you know, anyone that's pulled off a book like that other than the writer of Howl's Moving Castle. It's a very high bar. Very high bar. So, I don't know. I wouldn't probably even try it. But I know there have been people who have. And that's totally fine. But we also have to look at marketability and what can middle graders understand how does it read can they comprehend it easily or like you know it's okay if they have to think about it absolutely but throwing you know paint against the wall and making a splatter is not always the best especially if you want to bring in a lot of new readers that are reluctant or don't have the confidence. Thank you so much for watching my book review on The Girl Who Drank the Moon. Have a great reading day. Bye!